Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at something I call the glass blur effect in Premiere Pro. All right, it's a very simple technique, but really useful when you need to focus attention and uh, help things like titles stand out. What's important is that although you could do this with an adjustment layer, making it with shapes and text really is a lot of fun. So let's have a look at, at three examples here and then we'll break them apart and, and I'll make them. So here we need to show some text. So to do that, um, because the background is, is very high contrast, then you can't really choose one color. If you make it dark, the dark parts of the, the background um, hide the text or make it hard to read. And if it's just, you get the idea. If you look here, there's dark and light uh, and it's hard to read that text. So if we've got this shape that's blurry and you can see the background is blurred in there. All right, let's look at a couple of text examples here. There's something special with this text that I'm gonna point out in a second to see if you noticed. It's another one, just a different animation this way. This time it's going um, side to side. And then an example using an adjustment layer completely um, affecting the whole image. So again, you could read something in the front. You still see what's going on in the background, but it's not going to, if, if we got rid of this, that's very hard to read. But when you do this, it highlights it. And that's the focus of this technique, is to either uh, tastefully do it to text so you can still read the words, or in this example, in the first example, make the text the focal point and instead of just a, a white background coming in or a black background, make it a little bit more elegant. So let's look at the beginning here. I'll, get, I'll hide the text for a second and we'll look at this shape. So this is a graphic shape. If I go to my essential graphics, you can see there it is. It's just a rectangle like that. But if we go to the effects controls, you'll see brightness and Gaussian blur. Now let's just make this again and I'll copy these effects so I don't have to go look for them. This is just brightness and contrast, and it's turned up so that it makes everything bright. And then uh, the uh, Gaussian blur is a blurriness of, in my example here, 22. So I'll re reuse these. I'll select them both. I could save this as a preset, but I'm going to copy these. So let's get rid of that. I'll go get my rectangle tool drag my rectangle tool out and it's placed above here. So let's bring this down. And you know, this is what the boring text looks like. Well, we don't want that boring text, but watch what happens. If I just paste those effects over here, the blur and the uh, brightness and contrast, that's what you get. <laughs> that's because this is a shape and you're adding the effects on the shape. So the effects are affecting the shape, not what's below it. We need to turn this shape into an adjustment layer. You know how easy it is? Right click, boom, right click and make this an adjustment layer. Boom, just like that. And I'll give this rounded edges by going back to my essential, oops. There we go, clicking on the shape and dragging that down so I've got rounded edges. So that's the difference is if, if, you, if you don't have this as an adjustment layer, if I turn that off, that's what you get. But when you make it an adjustment layer, then the effects are showing up like that. So if we move this any place, I keep selecting that text above it. If we move this anywhere, we're going to see that, that effect of that blur. So it can be used for really interesting results. Uh, either these can be animated or we could have a whole bunch of these um, on the screen. You know, and create this kind of an effect.
you get the idea. The video is moving behind it, but these blurs are happening there. So there's that example. Now we just did the same thing to text. If I right click on the text and turn off the adjustment layer, that's all it is. And you get to set how much this is blurred. In the effects controls, Gaussian blur, if we reset this to zero, we can see through the text, but that doesn't have that frosted glass effect. I mean, this is fine. This looks good too. But, uh, you know, there's the, the, the brightness and contrast. But when you turn that blur up underneath it, then you get that effect. So I said there was something special in this to see if you could uh, notice this. Let me just show you that. Again, I'll show you that. If you said tracking animation, you're correct. The space between each character is tracking. This is a real typical motion graphics technique, and it's so easy to do in After Effects. <laughs> in After Effects, you change the tracking value from one number to another, and it animates it from those two numbers. Premiere Pro does not. Premiere Pro will snap. It's a hold keyframe. So if you have zero to 100, it'll be zero till it gets to the next keyframe and then jump to 100. So how did I make mine smooth like this? Let's go to the effects controls and look at 100 keyframes. That's how I made that. So I moved this one at a time and I changed the number for the uh, source text. So you'll see the source text tracking number, 90, 91, 92, 93. So I, I basically, I changed the number, moved my mouse over here and used my scroll wheel to jump one number at a time. And then I created that, I did that a hundred times. So I could have that effect. You're probably hoping you could select those, save them, and then reuse them. No. <laughs> the reason is this is a source text animation, which means the text itself is part of this animation. It's not like After Effects where the tracking information is independent of what the words say. So you can't reuse that. Okay, let's go to the next example here. Pretty simple, it's just the, the word animating from left to right very large, slow enough that you can read it, and you can see that glass effect in there. Very elegant, very simple, dresses things up nicely. And if we wanted to, let's go back over to our brightness and contrast. All of these are making it bright, but if I wanted to, I could darken this. So I'll go the opposite way. And now this text comes in dark. It's still blurry in there. I just don't like, in this example, I think everything should have this bright kind of feel to it. So again, right click on that and make it an adjustment layer and it's just animated text. Any shape uh, will work. The last example does use a standard adjustment layer. So in your project panel, this little uh, new item, make an adjustment layer. And it's really just a blank video that automatically has the adjustment layer checkbox turned on. And all I'm doing here is I'm animating the, the Gaussian blur and the brightness and contrast. So it goes from zero uh, in this example to 59 blurriness and 77 brightness. Really bright to be able to read that. And then it fades out. And if we turn the adjustment layer off, then what we're doing is we're blurring that. Now, one other important thing about this adjustment layer or anything converted to an adjustment layer, if you wanted to fade that effect in and fade out, you might think this is a clip on the timeline. Can I just put a cross dissolve on both? Well, let's find out what happens. So remember, I've got these keyframes. So I'll take these keyframes out 
and I'll so right now we're we're at 59 and 42 with it it just starts that way. So if I hit control D, look what happens. I'll move the the head in a little bit and you'll see it cross dissolves the whole thing. So, an adjustment layer affects everything below it. So if you put a dissolve on the adjustment layer above, it's going to put a dissolve on everything below it. So you can't use, well, in this example, um, I can't use it because I don't want the bed to disappear. I want it to fade into white. So that's why I used the, the uh, keyframes that I had over here because I'm changing the effect over time. See, the adjustment layer is here but there's nothing happening until it gets to there. If I wanted to, I could trim this to here. And now it fades in like that. So there are some requirements um, if you are using an adjustment layer. And you can see I've got a cross dissolve on the type. So the title itself comes in and dissolves out. So there you go, it's it's pretty simple. I call it the glass blur effect. It's probably a, a hundred different names and different tutorials that other people do, but it's really important, it's powerful. You'll see this used all the time um, in, in uh, motion graphics, really simple to do. I always like to keep stuff in Premiere Pro because if I need to make a change to the blurriness or the, the font or style or something, everything's in the timeline. That's why something simple like this, there's no reason to go all the way out to After Effects. Unless you wanted to do that tracking of the type. Oh, how I wish Adobe would take tracking out of the source and put it on its own animated property. Hey, Adobe, let's do that, right? Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? You can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once or monthly. Any amount, like our wonderful donors do. Thank you so much. Uh, any amount. Uh, we have some people that donate a dollar. And you think, does that make a difference? It sure does. So thank you very much. If you like this tutorial, let us know. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to watch TV and watch motion graphics and start breaking these down into simple tutorials that you can use, not in After Effects, but you can use right inside Adobe Premiere Pro.